Um, before the 7 a.m. or the 6.30 Mass on Sundays, um, there's going to be the Litany of St. Gianna. We're asking St. Gianna again to intercede to find a home that will be specifically yours. And so we won't have you know, to deal with the problem of schedules and et cetera, et cetera. So we're asking her to intercede for us and find us a little home all of our own. Um, there's also in the rosary, we're going to pray for specific um, intentions during the rosary. Um, we are going to try something where we could have benediction and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament during the week. Monday just does not work. Um, people are still kind of regrouping from the weekend. It's your first day back to work. You're exhausted. You need to rest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we're looking at doing? So read your bulletin again to see when it actually is going to happen. So I want to hear somebody calling me up and saying, "I heard you say that we're going to do it right now." So we're thinking about this for the best of everybody. An email was sent out to I don't know how many people. I didn't send it out because I still don't have a roster of who's who. And we said it would be nice if we could have Mass on Wednesday morning at 7. And for me, I'm still um, going to school with Father Fryer. And it would give me a time to be leave after that Mass to go up to Phoenix to be with him and study. And since it's real hard if you go to Phoenix anymore to get back in any kind of calm state of mind and have Mass the next morning. So it would be Thursday evening at 6 o'clock that we would begin benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. We would have adoration. So you would be free to come during that time. You don't have to be there right at 6. And so then there would be benediction and then Mass at 7. So that people who are not able to go to Mass in the morning have a chance to have another Mass during the week. And since adoration is something that's very important to the tradition of the church, and we are traditional people, it is allowing us to be with God in a very intimate moment and to be blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ, mysteriously present in the monster and then to receive him in Holy Eucharist. So we're looking at that, that would give me a chance to continue going to school and people a chance to um, have an opportunity to go to Mass in the evening and people also to have adoration, which I really feel is important if we're going to come together as a people. We have to be centered on Christ, nothing else. We can't be centered on whether the new Mass or the old Mass is the right one. We prefer the traditional, classical liturgy of the Church. Tito, it's mechanical. You'll have to help me. That happened one other time when I was at St. John's, and I, I have it on because it's the hospital phone. And uh, so I didn't know I had the microphone on, and I went in the sacristy, and everybody heard the conversation. So, ah, <laughs> uh, God's permissive will. <laughs> but anyway, let us begin with the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and in the, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we look at this very beautiful reading, that Jesus is teaching of God, who is our neighbor? I think in the modern world and in the modern church, much is concerned about social justice. 
and social justice issues. Well, I think if we look at the traditional movement of the church all along, we were always interested in social justice. How many hospitals did orders of priests and nuns and brothers found? How many orphanages? How many asylums? All of this was social justice, giving people a say in the matters that count. And Leo XIII on what it is to respect human worth and the human being. So I'm not going to approach this reading by looking at social justice issues. I think the Holy Spirit calls us forth to do those works of charity that he wants us specifically to do. What I would prefer looking at is the liturgy and how the liturgy and all the readings focus on the gospel. We are about the spiritual life. We are about growing in the life of the most blessed Trinity. So the Trinity is always opening us to an inner life, a contemplative life with them. They created us to know them and to love them. And therefore we want to serve them. But they created us to know them because they want us to know that they love us. The Father loves us. The Son loves us. The Spirit loves us. There are no other feelings they have but those for us. And so if we look at this story, it is a story about all of us who are in the ditch. And it is Jesus who comes to care for us. Has there ever been a time when you haven't been in the ditch once or twice? When you were wounded spiritually? When you were crying out for help? Who came? Why did that call inside you even come about? It's the Spirit who allows us to call out Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Mercy is that wonderful term, chesed, in the Jewish language, that is a mother's love for her child. And as we've shared before, it is the very words that Jesus used to St. Faustina when he was giving her the revelation of divine mercy. Mercy is a mother's love for her child. So Jesus uses this Hebrew word, this image, to talk about how God loves us. We are all in the ditch. There are all times when we are just bankrupt spiritually. As Jesus said, those without sin cast the first stone. No one can cast the stone. And the Blessed Mother's out of the picture, so she's not even involved here, okay? 